everybody, my name is Brooke and today we are going over 10 writing don'ts that I still do. I still do things as a writer that I should not be doing. The things that I do do not help me in the long run to aid in my work in progress. I have my writing do's that work for me as a writer and I have my writing don'ts that oh my gosh just kill my chances of getting my book done. Today I'm going over 10 things that I have lipstick on my hands. Ah, look at that. Today I'm going over those 10 things that are writing don'ts that you should not do that I continue to do today. Number one, rereading my book over and over. I have that horrible habit of rereading the work that I just wrote down or rereading the work that I wrote down the day before or the day before that or the day before that. I just will continue to reread everything that I have done. I will never be able to get through with my writing if I'm not able to proceed on with the following chapter or the next following chapter. Which brings me into number two is re-editing my work. As I'm rereading my work, I will go ahead and be editing the work that I am doing. I'll fix sentence structure, I'll fix the moments of where I'm telling and not showing. I reread my work that I had just worked on because I am nervous of leaving out certain dialogue moments, certain character moments that really needed to shine. I don't realize that I can fix things on down the road after I'm done writing that first draft. I never get into my head that it will not be perfect the first go around for writing my first draft. I need to just get that into my head because it's so annoying to not be able to continue on with my book. And I need to stop. That is a that is my worst writing dope right there is re-editing what I had just uh, written the day before. And those first two go into what number three, uh, number four, what number three is, which is re-editing my first chapter over and over. Uh, I'm always sick of my my first chapter. I will read my first chapter of whatever book I'm working on so many times is the chapter that I usually know the best because I always am editing it the most. I think in my head if readers don't like my first chapter that they won't continue on with the rest of my book. But once again I'm in the first draft so I need to just remember that the first draft is never going to be perfect and that I need to just carry on especially if I have changes later on in the book that are going to affect what had already written in the earlier previous chapters. So if I re-edit the first chapter over and over, it's not going to benefit me if I need to re-edit it anyway later on. So all of that re-editing moments that I had spent writing and re-editing is going to go to waste. Nothing is going to get done if I'm just going to be in this re-editing limbo world for the rest of my book. Okay, now on to number four, which is not setting a writing schedule. I'll have in my head at the beginning of each week of what day I know I will be at home able to write, but most of the time uh, I'll change plans or I'll say, oh, I can, I can go ahead and change this, it's no big deal. I can go ahead and skip this writing session, that's fine. I need to stick with what I know what day I'm going to be focused on writing and I need to be more strict with my writing schedule because otherwise I'll just be a loosey-goosey. <laughs> Lucy -goosey. I just know that um, if I'm really relaxed with changing up the days of whenever I'm writing that I'll be too relaxed and not want to get my writing done on that day that I had planned. I don't stick to the schedule, which means that I will not stick to my progress in writing, which I do not like, and this is something that I hate that I still do. And the next one kind of correlates with number five, which is not staying focused when writing. I'm sure everyone has this type of uh, struggle that they go through whenever they're trying to work on their work in progress because it's really hard to stay focused in this day and age with all of our social media accounts beeping at us and uh, notifying us on when something has changed and also having a TV that can be accessed on your phone or on your computer or on the TV screen. TV is a definite weakness of mine. I usually like to binge watch lots of shows, so I will always be in that battle of, oh, I, I need to write, but oh, I just left off on whenever Sally just cheated on the fryer. <laughs> The struggle is real whenever you're trying to balance out watching a show that you're addicted to and wanting to write. Gilmore Girls got me this summer, 
Right now it's Heart of Dixie. I was doing X-Files, but now I've kind of taken a break from that. And I'm actually watching, uh, oh, what's it called? Twin Peaks. I'm watching Twin Peaks right now. And I need to get back into Vampire Diaries. I had left off, oh, I don't even remember what season. But oh my gosh, that show's done and I don't even know what happens. I need to get back into that. You see, I get distracted with TV shows all the time. It's so bad. I need to get focused on writing. Jeez. Number six, not setting a word count goal. I don't set a time limit on whenever I write. I, Whenever I sit down to write, I don't have I'm going to write for this amount of time or I'm going to write for this long until I hit 500 words until or until I hit a thousand words. I never have a word count goal whenever I write, which is horrible because I could only be getting 200 words down on a page or I could only have five even. Not having word count, a schedule, and not having any focus really hurt me in progressing in what I'm wanting to do. Here's a really bad one, number seven, which is taking a break from writing, but then never get back to writing. I write a lot after work. And so whenever I get off of work at four, I'll come home and I'll be sitting here and I'll write. And then I'll get hungry. And so I'll take a break and have some dinner. But then, like I had said before, TV distracts me very much so from my writing. And so while I'm eating, I'm watching TV, which just kills my writing buzz. And so, once I'm on this couch, I think I've said this in several videos that this couch is horrible. I'll fumble into the relaxation mode and I'll just want to watch TV and do nothing. Nothingness is like a waste of time. Nothingness is nothing. I don't get anything done. I think it's fine to take breaks from writing. I think that's a-okay. You just need to be very strong and get back to writing later on after you're done. I need to be a lot stronger. I know, I know. <coughs> I just hit my foot on my desk, sorry. <laughs> Number eight, getting distracted with new book ideas. I think this is a given for like any writer out there that we can get distracted with new pretty ideas of what else that we can do for future writing projects that we don't turn that project into a future writing project, we turn that project into a now project, which kind of skids our current work and project into the back burner and we tend to forget about it with this shiny new book idea. I do this type of thing on the regular and it needs to come to a stop. Oh my gosh. But shiny new book idea syndrome really can't be stopped for writers. I know it sometimes can't be stopped for me. We're always going to have new ideas for future book projects. So we just need to go ahead and think, yes, that's good for later. For right now, I need to work on this. For right now, I have to get this done. That's what I need to say to myself. That is what I will do from now on. Whenever those shiny book ideas just come fluttering into my head, they need to go away. Number nine is sadly not reading enough. I really don't read as many books as what I'd like to because every time I read a book I want to put it down and focus on whatever I'm writing at the time. But it's so good to read. I need to remember that it's so good to see what other authors have come up with and what their style is compared to mine and it will challenge me to work harder and it will challenge me to write better. And I miss reading. I see all of these booktubers on YouTube pointing out all the books that they've got and I'm just like, oh, that sounds amazing. I wanna read that. But I know I never get around to reading those books and it's sad because I just never take the time to do it. I always have other things going on in life and those things can be put on a pause. I miss those days of staying up till like 3 a.m. in the morning just to see what happens next to whatever character I'm reading about. I need to set a goal of maybe one book a month to read or something like that. If I can do something as simple as reading a book a month, I can maybe even get to two books a month or three, who knows? And number 10, back to seeing lipstick on my hands. Number 10, not having enough confidence when writing. I'm pretty confident in my skills as a writer, but there are definitely moments where I will reread a passage like you know I do, and I will just have doubt of going, why didn't I do it this way? Why didn't I just take out this adverb and put in a much more suitable verb? Or my grammar isn't as clean as I want it to be. Or my dialogue isn't as powerful as I had envisioned in my head. Everyone has doubts and fears as a writer and I need to know that this will never go away and I need to accept that. And when that doubt and fear comes crawling back, I need to just put that negativity away and turn everything into positivity. I need to be confident in myself as a writer because everything is on me. It is on me for my book to get done. It is on me to have my voice come through. And it is on me for my readers to be entertained for, with the book that I had written for them. Okay, so that's it. Those were my 10 writing don'ts that I still do as a writer. But admitting all those bad quirks that I have will hopefully make me want to be better and it will make me want to turn all of 
these bads into goods, if that makes sense. <laughs> if you share one of my writing flaws, go ahead and list it below so that way we can go ahead and pump each other up to do a lot better in the future. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to subscribe so that way you can see more of my future videos. And also feel free to follow me on other social media accounts. I'm normally on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you all so much for stopping by and I hope to see you next time. Bye!